How was it meeting Ted Cruz? Oh, I have a story for you guys. This is about to blow your mind. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am getting ready because I am filming a sketch tonight. It's gonna be a night shoot. While I'm putting on my makeup, I thought I would answer some of my questions that you guys asked me on Instagram, as I promised. I would. You know, it's funny is I think I did one of these a while ago before I had any fans. <laughs> and I don't think it got any views. Lately I've been, uh, I've been getting a lot of new followers on here, on YouTube, and on Instagram. And I'm just so happy you guys are here. Very open book, so I'm happy to share um, whatever you guys want to know. Let's get into it. We'll start with some basics and then we'll get a little bit deeper into the spicy questions, okay? I'm definitely willing to answer. I'm open. I'm willing to get into it, but I can't just give it to you in the first minute of the video. I gotta get my watch time hours somehow, so stay tuned for the spicy answers. First question, what state are you from? I am from the beautiful state of California. Born and raised right here in Los Angeles, actually. But I am still here. I am still here. Call me resilient. All right, next question. What's it like in your new home of Texas? And obviously they're referring to the Babylon Bee series. So fun, and it's about Californians moving to Texas. And uh, I get to really live out my stereotypical Californian. We just want to be extra. Just crazy LA. Want to drop by? <laughs> so I'm not in Texas, and I don't plan to be. To answer your question. What was the most fun Babylon B skit to film? They're all really fun to film. I mean, the team is just amazing. I'm just so, so grateful that I get to do this with such an awesome team. First one that popped in my head was the Lord of the Rings, Rings of the Power sneak peek parody that we did. I got to get my, my best friend Tara on that shoot and she did her own makeup and made herself look like a crazy orc. And I just remember specifically that day looking across the set in the forest that we were filming in and looking at everyone and thinking this is my job like this is i assure so you crazy i have I'm no so, quarrel so with you um i remember that what one is an elf maiden doing so far active, from home and a very big Who character and being of, of different colored such. hair it was which took a while to get out but i really remember having a great time on that set next question are you single no no i'm not single <laughs> Stop asking. You know, we're all looking for our special someone, but it ain't gonna be me. This is fun. Political party? Uh, no, I don't belong to a political party. I know that everyone wants to know what side everybody's on, but honestly, that's just not the way we need to be communicating about politics anyway. I think we need to be issue by issue and actually have a conversation instead of just labeling and identity politicking our way to, I don't know, it's just not, it's not encouraging a unified society. It's just not, not healthy. Uh, I've never been a part of a political party. I've always registered as independent. I bet that's not a very satisfying answer, but that's the truth. You have to pick between the two, Tolkien or C.S. Lewis. You guys, I'm about to blow your minds. I am not very smart. Because I did watch a little bit of Lord of the Rings and when I was younger and when I was in my Harry Potter phase and I just didn't get it, I just didn't get it. So don't hate me, don't at me, if I can see us, Lewis. Frightened Sword asks, how was it meeting Ted Cruz? Oh, I have a story for you guys. This is about to blow your mind. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? I didn't get to meet Ted Cruz. <laughs> it's movie magic. Ooh, movie magic. Yeah, that's right. I did not get to meet Ted Cruz. I didn't go to Texas to film that episode of California's Move to Texas on the Babylon Bee. Um, that part was filmed in California, and then our videographer flew out to Texas to get the clips of Ted Cruz answering the door. So, fooled ya, didn't we? We fooled ya, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, but no, I didn't get to meet uh, Teddy. So, uh, for all the haters that are like, wow, how dare, it's like, dude, everyone needs to relax. Everyone just needs to relax. How is the music slash songwriting going? Will you be releasing anything soon? <sighs> I knew this day would come where people would want to know when I'm releasing more music. Your answer is I have no plans to release music 
at the moment. Maybe this is a chance for me to just like get into it a little bit. I've been writing music since I was 16. I started releasing music when I was about 18 or 19. So since like 2013, I was releasing singles, realizing that wasn't right, my right sound, taking it down, starting over, focusing on it throughout my college education, not really paying attention in class because I just cared so much about my artist career and my branding and just learning how to be an artist and, and build a following and a community and all that stuff. So I've been doing it for a really long time. Um, right before the pandemic hit, I kind of, I kind of did develop a little bit of a community. I had a pretty good following in the area of Los Angeles. I was performing very often in the nightlife um, and I had millions of streams on Spotify. I still do. Pandemic, when I couldn't perform anymore, it was really saddening for me. And not only that, it just became exhausting. It's a lot to get into, but ultimately the process of music creation stopped being fun for me somewhere along the way. And impressing the tastemakers and gatekeepers in Los Angeles became more important than connecting to you guys, the fans and the music lovers. And it's an incredibly challenging thing to do to be an independent artist and fund your own dreams. And when I was doing that, I was really broke. I wasn't really making a lot of money. I It might've looked like I was successful from the outside. I would always get messages like, you're killing it. You're so successful now. Like you've blown up and stuff like that. But people had no idea that on the inside, I was really, really struggling financially, mentally. And um, yeah, just, just not on a sustainable path. Say all that to say, I am so happy with where I am right now. I have always wanted to do sketch comedy regularly and I'm doing that now and I work for an amazing company and I'm having such a great time um, and I'm really connecting and resonating with people now and, and actually creating that community and, and I'm by no means done with music forever. I just am focusing on my joy and my passion right now and that's filmmaking, producing and acting and sketch comedy and just making making myself and others laugh because the times we live in are very crazy and the laughter really heals. Yeah, the music scene in LA <laughs> is uh, pretty toxic and unhealthy and a lot of those people that I worked with have unfollowed me since taking on this new path of comedy. Uh, sensitive people that are in the music scene uh, didn't like that and have unfollowed me. So that's been, that's been you know, something that I've had to deal with. Um, but I also think like, damn, y'all are self-serious AF because I'm having a great time. I'm laughing and I'm calling out objective truths and you're the one getting offended by my jokes. So I, anyway, I used to be so petrified by fear. Like, oh no, people are gonna judge me because they don't understand me and this and that. Like at this point, I feel very, very content with who I am, with my family, with my friends, with my colleagues and coworkers and who is meant to be in my life going to be in my life and I'm so so happy doing what I'm doing right now. I know that was a long answer and I just messed up my eye makeup but bear with me here. Professor of Wright says, are you Katy Perry but not a douchebag? We don't say that name in my house. Katy Perry. Ugh. I have some forgiveness to do in this area. One of the reasons that I went for music and an artist career in the first place. Story time, I did get to meet Katy Perry. I was courted by some executive producers of American Idol at one of my shows in Hollywood. They emailed me a few times and I just like really wasn't interested in auditioning for American Idol because I think reality shows are stupid. Um, but they came to my show and they came up to me afterwards. It was like a sold out show. There were a ton of people there and they came up to me afterwards like, oh my gosh, Chandler, like we're such fans of you, you're so amazing. We want you on our show. And I was like, what show? And they were like, American Idol. And I was like, oh. <laughs> convinced me to come on the show. I got to audition in front of the judges, including Katy Perry. And I was very excited to meet her, but it was like a really rough filming day. My call time was 5 a.m. and I showed up at 5 a.m. and I didn't audition until like after 8 p.m. that night. So I was exhausted. Can't even imagine how exhausted the judges were. But I got in there and Katy Perry was... <sighs> what a moment for the camera to die. And I have no backup batteries. How embarrassing is that? I was talking about my experience auditioning for American Idol and what a nightmare it was. 
Meeting Katy Perry was just absolutely not what I thought it was gonna be. She had a very dark energy and I'm sure she was pregnant at the time. She's probably exhausted, whatever. We didn't hit it off. She rejected me first. Her Lionel Richie rejected me. And the other guy, the Luke Bryan, he was like, well, you're talented, so yes, I guess. And I was like so hurt because I felt like they courted me and kind of like promised, I mean, they can't promise something like that, but I just really thought it was gonna go better than it did. And I um, just didn't do my best. And it was a very traumatizing moment for me. Katy Perry, she almost seemed to enjoy telling me no. She let, like looked me in the eyes as she said no and held my gaze. And it was really weird. And this is before I knew that like, demons are real and stuff. <laughs> but I remember saying she had a darkness to her. That's all I'm gonna say. How did you start working with the Babylon Bee? Well, it started with me going on the podcast as a guest host. I was introduced to a mutual friend who had been on the podcast a couple of times and um, it went great. We hit it off and I mentioned to them like, hey, I make sketch comedy videos on my own channel. Um, if you ever want to collaborate, if you ever need an actress, let me know. And they did. I think once every month or every two months I would come in and do a sketch. It started to become more and more frequent and then they offered me a part-time job. I came on as an actor and a writer and I started writing scripts, which <laughs> made me like the writing more. No, I'm just kidding. So it started with me going on as a guest host on the podcast. Then I started acting and more and more frequently I would act and then I got hired as a writer and an actor. And now I'm on as a producer, actor and writer. And it is just, I'm just over the moon. It's honestly such a perfect job for me. It is so in alignment and I'm definitely pretty based. <laughs> it's just such a blessing that, um, that I got involved with what the Babylon Bee is doing. What's your favorite breakfast food? Eggs Benedict. That's my favorite breakfast item. Um, or biscuits and gravy. But every time I eat biscuits and gravy, I feel like total doo-doo afterwards. Um, yeah, I've avoided all the questions that are like, why are you so perfect? Why are you so badass? Why are you so beautiful? It's genetic. It's genetic. Thanks, mom and dad. This makeup look is really starting to come together. I bet you cannot guess what we are filming tonight. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Thank you for asking these questions. Thanks for watching this all the way through. If you're here, leave me the crystal ball emoji to let me know you watched it all the way through. <laughs> But you're just gonna have to stay tuned and find out why I love this way. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just seriously so thankful for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know me a little bit better. Love you guys, bye.